Carson, hello. Please give an introduction about yourself. Hi, yeah, my name is Carson Stewart. I work in uh, the CC and AI campus in the real world. Um, I've been making money for about three months in there now. I've, I've made almost $10,000. I work closely with launching podcasts and I use AI to enhance the content that I produce for a pretty large retainer client plus one offs here and there. In what way do you use AI to enhance the content? So AI I've found has been incredibly useful in grabbing attention right from the get go. So if I can put it in the hook, it's going in the hook, but I also use it to enhance different points. I'll use AI like mid journey to create maybe a scene or a, a location to talk like if, okay, so if we're talking surveillance products, for example, and I want to talk about the specs of the camera, maybe I'll have a piece, an, an image or a video made through AI that dives into the camera and it has kind of the, the circuitry overlay where now I'm talking about why is this camera special? Or if I'm talking about um, hunting products, then now I have a scene built in a forestry area where a specific trap might be useful, something like that, something that people haven't seen before. Very interesting. Okay. And when you say you work in the CC and AI campus, do you, are you a captain there or do you just mean the work you do revolves around it? Yeah, the work I do revolves around it. I'm not a captain in there. Um, I started in the copywriting campus and it, it wasn't really for me. I'm not super fantastic at writing. It's not my strong suit. Uh, and then I went to e -com. I was like, all right, let me try something else. I'm, I'm pretty good with websites. I have a background and that kind of stuff. So I started working with that, spent some time in there. It again, also wasn't for me. So then I jumped into CC and AI and I've hit the ground running. I've grown up kind of in the tech world and I'm pretty confident with my CC, CC, my content creation skills already. So I figured this feels like a good fit and I've gone in and it just, I took off. I mean, I've had no problems in there. Um, I've, I've got my name around there, which has been helpful. People, people reach out to me for help now, which makes me feel kind of good. Mm -hmm. So it's been a good experience. Nice. Love to hear that. Okay. Um, you talk quite a bit about your background. You mentioned a few things that is, so I would like to know some more as much as you're comfortable revealing what was your background before you joined the real world? Sure. Well, my dad works in computer repair. He's launched, he's owned a company since before I was born. So I kind of grew up in the, in the realm of computers and I've used them since, since I could talk really if not before. So I'm just really comfortable navigating my way around computers. And then I got into digital design when I was in high school and I was messing with Adobe suite and all of that. I had Illustrator, Photoshop, After Effects, Premiere Pro, all that fun stuff that I was just messing around with. And then I kind of bounced away from it, came back and now I, I, I jumped into the CCAI campus. So I haven't had a job per se in content creation. It's just that I'm really familiar with the way that a computer works. I just feel really comfortable in front of a monitor. Mm -hmm. Nice. And what aspects of the campus did you actually get into and progress through? Sure. Well, the campus has a couple different paths to go. So they have the white path, which is my favorite, and that teaches you content creation and how to utilize AI in that. So it's not so much putting yourself in front of the camera as it is taking full videos that someone else has made and you edit them into what they need to be to grab an audience and to engage an audience. The gold path teaches you more how to talk to the camera, how to be authentic, your energy is important, how to bring emotive speech into it and humor. Those are all important aspects of, of having a conversation with a camera, especially when it's just you in, and the camera in a room, it can feel weird sometimes. So they teach you how to, how to do all of that. Mm -hmm. Then they have the, the PCB, which is the Perf performance creator bootcamp. And that's an in progress project right now, but that teaches you to take those skills and to reach out to clients or prospects and well, get to work with them. Mm -hmm. But it's more than just the courses that I found to be really useful. I think that the content creation campus has the most productively active main chat, if that makes sense. So we have the, the content creator chat in there where everybody in the campus, thousands of people in the campus are just bouncing ideas off of each other and everybody's helping each other 
kind of tackle new problems. We have a different area to submit your, your content creation for feedback from really fantastic content creators. You can submit to an AI channel, your art to an AI channel or any problems you have with it to get feedback for that. There's just, I don't know, 15 chats or so that are directly around fixing certain problems. And to have that kind of access to such a large group of people, I mean, it really just takes you on its own path. Mm -hmm. Ah, so hopefully I answered that question the way you were What's you that? say path when all the lessons are white path, gold path. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if that was intentional, yeah. pretty good. Okay, uh, which of those did you actually use to make money for? Which of them helped you? Actually, both of them. So I started with the white path specifically, and that was useful for me. So one of the projects I do with a retainer of mine is I create internal trainings for their, they, they're in the corporate world and they have brought me in as a, as a, I guess you could say contractor where I provide them with internal training videos. So they'll record in front of their camera and then they need someone to do the post-production and I'm that guy. So I've been handling that. That was my first step into that, that retainer, uh, contract. And then I use the gold path now to launch a podcast for them. So I'm launching two podcasts, but one of them I'm the host of. Uh, and you'll see that pop up on YouTube here shortly. We're working on it behind the scenes right now. But that's been super helpful for me to work with the camera to create an engaging environment for an audience. Mm -hmm. So both. Interesting. How did you land that client? Uh, I called them. I have a friend who knows the HR person. And they didn't get me like in or anything like that. They just gave me the phone number. So I didn't have to look it up online. But then I called them and I told them this is what I want to do. And they said, no. And I said, please, kind of. <laughs> and so I just, I kind of sent them the kind of things that I can help them with. I was talking to them about, look, the world's going digital and you guys are a relatively smaller firm we can make you a bigger firm because none of the other ones are doing this. If none of the other ones are doing this and you do it, it's, it, they're not, not doing it because it's not a good idea. They're not doing it because they don't know how they don't have the resources, whatever the reason is. So if you do it, all it's going to do is, is just skyrocket you. So let's figure this out. So I started working with them on, on smaller things, kind of proving my worth, you know, and then now we've been able to go up. So I'm doing the training videos with them, the internal training videos. I'm doing the two podcasts, I'm turning it into um, turning it into some short form stuff, which is going very well. We are doing different webinar series for their internal channels, so they're like live uh, live sessions. They're like seminars, but virtual for those who don't know. Um, we're doing different series for their clients to reach out further. So it's it's kind of like a double layer. We're doing a lot of big stuff and, and I think that it's going to go really far. What's the plan there then? Increase their reach so they get more clients? Is it that basic or does it go more in depth? It goes a little bit more in depth. So their whole thing is to, they have a bunch of clients and they make, they make money through, I guess you could say affiliate. It's a commission based thing. So they're a financial firm. They work with advisors. As the advisors make more money, the firm makes more money because the advisors pay a fee to the firm. And so my role has shifted into a, a few different things. So one thing that I work on with the firm is let's expand the firm's reach to more advisors. The other thing that I work on is let's expand the advisor's reach to more clients. So I'm growing two different audiences. We're growing the audiences, we're growing the audience of advisors within the firm and we're growing the audiences of clients for each advisor. Interesting. Okay. I may not have explained that super well, so I'm happy to dive into it if we, if we want to go further. I'm wondering how much did you propose in terms of monetarily to offer this service? Um, well, initially I was making 1.5 K a month. And then when we brought on the podcasts, I doubled it. So we're making three, three K a month from this client. And I'm going to raise it soon, but I want to get these podcasts secured. I want to get them both 
launched. I want to prove the worth of the podcasts. And then I'm really going to throw it up there because the more that I can put into it, the better it's going to be, the better it is for them. The more money they make from it, the more money I make from it. Mm -hmm. So, And is it just the online setup for the podcast or are they in person? They're in person. I actually happen to be pretty close. I'm about 90 miles away from, from the, uh, the company's area. So I, I'm going to go, I go down there every now and then we're going to do big sessions of recording. So in one day we'll record four podcasts mm -hmm. or eight podcast sessions, split them up in post. I can do all that here at, at my home, split it all up in post, do all the, the post-production work here post it out on YouTube, do all the reach out to different clients, do the reach out to advisors that can all be done from here. Um, so that's been, that's been super helpful. I did get lucky that they were close to me. I didn't have to reach out a country or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And then how do you plan on actually proving to them that it's worth the podcast? Cause it, they take a while to scale, no? The reason I think that it's not going to be too challenging to scale it and, and it hasn't been too challenging to scale the webinars because those are, we've been doing those and those went incredibly well. Um, I don't think it's going to be too much of a challenge to scale them because we start in house. There's over a thousand advisors, 1600 or something like that we're working mm -hmm. with. And so the first audience is them and we have webinars the one of the first webinars that we did, we got 400 attendees on right off, right out of the gate. So, and those are all in house mm -hmm. and all these advisors, these 1600, these are in house. So we're going to, we're going to push it to them first, but it's also going to be post publicly. Mm -hmm. The goal is to reach all of the advisors within our grasp, the, the ones that are affiliated with the company. Um, sorry, I'm trying to keep the names a little bit quiet, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, um, so we're, we're working with all the advisors within the company and then also all the advisors that are just advisors. If you're a financial advisor, you're the target market. So it's, we're trying to spread it out through the whole country. Interesting. So yeah, I guess you're not starting from scratch. That's why yeah. it has potential to actually scale. Absolutely. Like yeah. Yeah. And, and to prove the worth of it, it I feel like it's going to be a little bit easier because I'm just going to prove the worth by doing it. It's just going to happen and that's going to prove it to them. So I don't have any concerns that I'm going to be able to, to, to raise the price of it. And I don't have any concerns that it's going to be successful because I've seen the webinars be successful and I've seen these, these smaller projects we've been working on be successful. So this is just going to be a stronger version of that. Good. And yeah, just basically what you're describing is you prove your worth to them, but then you upsell. You just have right. more and more services. So. Yeah. And uh, remind me, did you say then what the opening actual pitch was for what service you provide them? Yeah. So the opening pitch was, well, I sent them some, some ideas. I sent them kind of, here's, here's small videos of what I can do. So they had, they had some not so fantastic training videos before they were just, they, they reminded me of the trainings you would watch when you go in to get your driver's license. You know what I mean? Like the, the not so fantastically mm -hmm. looking, talking to a camera, it wasn't great. So I sent them, um, templates, essentially, here's what the screen could look like. Here's different overlay options. Let's add some music. Let's add some different angles. Um, and then I just, I guess, played the actor role and spoke about one of the topics. It was uh, annuities in this case, spoke about the topics that they were, they were training on. And I said, Hey, let's do this. Let's make a whole new platform. I'm not going to name it, but, but they use a, a, a learning management system. Let's redesign the platform. Let's throw in an on-demand library full of this training content. Let me do it for $1.5,000 a month. Let's start there. And it started going incredibly well. Um, and then, so I doubled it to 3000 a month because now I'm running the on-demand library, but we also got the podcasts and the webinars and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Very nice. Now, what would you say was the biggest challenge you faced when you were implementing lessons from the content creation and AI, AI campus to get to where you are now? That's a good question. I would say the biggest challenge I ran into was 
this is going to sound weird, but was just doing it, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like was just actually, actually doing it. Cause it felt in the beginning when you're outreaching to 10, 20, 50, a hundred, 200 clients, prospects, and you're not getting anywhere. It's really tough to just keep hearing all of the no's and do it anyway. And I think, I think, and I'm going to relate this to content creation and AI. It's time consuming to do content creation and AI. One of the biggest ways to outreach is to provide free value is to make a video or make a section of videos and send them to a prospect and be like, Hey, here's what I can do. Here's how I can benefit you. Let's have a conversation. And when you, when you make a hundred free value videos, you're spending hours just doing it. And if you're not getting anywhere, you can really get discouraged. You can slow down. Oh, well, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't what I should be doing. I'm wasting my time. Everyone said that this was going to get me out of, out of my full-time job. Everyone said that this is better than university and all I'm doing is wasting time. I disagree because every no is a, it teaches you how to do something a little bit better, a little bit differently. But B, every no is one closer to a yes. The yeses are out there. There's billions of people on on the internet and you need what, two or three of them to pay you a monthly retainer, which will equate to a full-time income, just two to three. It's not that bad, Mm -hmm. but it's hard when you get told no all the time. So that was the the toughest thing for me initially was just to keep doing it and, and doing it and doing it and doing it until something productive happened and it did okay i like that and i'm sure it's a common thing for many people what you just described okay then how different would you say your average day is now compared to before you joined the real watch well right now i also work full-time so it's pretty busy it's pretty busy um i've been in martial arts for two decades so that's important to me fitness is is incredibly important. Um, so that still happens every day. I still work my full-time job every day. And then I spend my extra time expanding on my skills and expanding on my, my, I guess my freelance business, the, the, the content creation and AI. So I'd say if I was to break it down, first thing I do is I get up, I don't eat breakfast right away. I don't know. I'm not hungry in the morning. Some people say you got to do it. Some people say you got to not do it. I just, I don't. Uh, I get up. First thing I do is I sit down at my computer and honestly, I go into the, the, the content creation chat in the real world. And I just look for a bunch of questions that people have. Um, I try to answer them to the best of my ability because I find that yes, it helps them. It also helps me because I get to think a little bit differently and a little deeper into what an issue might be. Um, so I jump into that. And then after about, I don't know, 30 minutes or so, I start working on my piece of work, whatever it is at that moment. So right now I'm working on, um, uh, another outreach video that I'm going to send to a new prospect, uh, a psychologist who has a podcast online and I want to start working with them. So I'm working on that, put a lot of effort into that. And then I'll work my full-time job. Um, and then I, uh, I'm a program coordinator. So that's my full time. And then I get off from work and I sit down and I make sure I get all this production work done for, for the stuff I'm working on with this retainer. That's the biggest thing on my plate right now, aside from the full-time job. And then I'll go uh, to my martial arts studio. I do kickboxing most recently. And then I come home, spend some time with my girlfriend. Relationships are important too. Everybody watching, don't forget that. Um, that's kind of my day to day. Okay. In total, then, considering everything you've been doing, and actually, let me add that what you're doing is on the side of your actual job. That's quite a bit of dedication there. So actually, I was going to ask a different question, but I want to ask this first. What would you say to people who call that excessive considering how much you're working? If you want to be the 1%, you have to do what the 1% does. And only 1% of the people work excessively. So I would say, yeah, it is excessive and it's tiring, but what everyone else is doing is getting the same results as everyone else, if that makes sense. So the average person works the average amount, whatever, eight hours a day, five days a week. 
and they get all of the average results that everyone average gets catching on like the average mm-hmm. that's the way it is so that's not to you of course that's to, to our audience the, mm-hmm. if you <laughs> if you're working the average you're going to get average results if you work above average you'll get above average results if you work the one percent you'll get one percent results all right okay and considering the work you put in on the side of your full-time job how much have you actually earned so far from it i've earned about ten thousand dollars and at 13,000 as of tomorrow, uh, mm-hmm. I have a, a check pending in the bank right now. So I just mm-hmm. went on a, a content trip with this client I'm talking to you about. Um, and it was a three day trip. So they gave me an extra three grand for it. So it's good. Plus, you know, paying for all of my food and my stay and all of that. So it was great. But yeah, I've made, I made about 10,000 and it's going to keep going up. Exactly. So where do you see this heading for you in the short term, medium term and long term, considering your trajectory? Do you mean financially or in just in, in general work? life and finances as well? Sure. Well, by the end of the year, I'd like to pull in 10,000 a month. So I'm at I'm at three ish a month. Um, right now, I would like to pull 10,000 a month starting January. So I'll work my way up to that. And I'd like to scale that further, of course, but that's my short term uh, in in the financial realm. My medium term, I would like to not so much work from my home and I'd like to take it on the road. I'd like to travel more. I'd like to do more that's not just within this area. So right now I'm working off of a big old, big old computer. I want to get, I'm working on getting my, uh, my MacBook Pro and just taking it around and, and, and working with more clients, working with more setting. I want to see more than just another house across the street. You know what I mean? So that's my medium term. And my long term is I'm trying to get my parents into retirement. I mean, they're both entrepreneurs. They worked their entire lives. They've sacrificed more than I think I could ever understand right now. I think it's, and I think it's time that I, give back the best that I can. So that's, that's one of my biggest goals is making sure that I can get far enough fast enough to get them out of their responsibilities, Mm -hmm. financially speaking. And do, does your family know what you're doing and that you're in the real world? They do. Yeah. They are incredibly supportive of the work that I do. Um, they know about this call as well. I told them last night, Hey, guess what, guess who I'm talking to tomorrow. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, they're, they're very, they're very in the know and they're very supportive of it. And, um, my sister too, she, she works as a, as a, a case manager, she's a social worker. So it's not a fantastically paying job, but it, she does a lot of good work and I'd love to be something that she could lean on financially so that she can put her energy into just focusing on, on helping people and not have to worry about how much the electric bill is going to be when she gets home. That's beautiful that the real world gives you this opportunity and that you've made use of it. You're actually doing well for yourself now. And again, this is just from one client so far, right? All the payments you got, or did you- One retainer. I've had a couple one-offs here and there, but one big retainer, yeah. So this is just the beginning of it and it will scale so much more for you. So yeah, that's- Yeah, I'm excited, I'm pumped. Where do you think your life would be if you hadn't joined the real world? Not- not as far as it is now. That's for sure. I think, I think that I would always get somewhere. Um, I've always prided myself in my ability to adapt. And I think that I'd figure it out, but it would certainly take 10 times as long to, to make it happen. You're walking into a community full of people focused on one specific goal and how to get there. And they also supplement with there's, there's, there's tips in there about fitness. There's tips in there about how to talk. There's tips in there about sleeping better. I mean, it, it doesn't end. So I think that wa- just walking into that is one of the most powerful things, because if you have a question, you have someone to ask and they'll answer it in the content creation campus. Uh, we have something called a super G role. Um, and basically you get that when you, demonstrate capacity to help people in the campus. And um, we've had it for, I don't know, four days now or something like that, maybe five. And today I just got it for the second time, which I'm pretty proud of. 
But what that allows you to do, what the role allows you to do is ask any question you have, whether it's in, whether it's a really detailed question or not, um, and you post it and the professor, our professor in this, in this campus is the Pope, the marketing chairman. Um, he will answer it in a live call and he'll go into detail on it. So, you know, you have resources in, in the entire, uh, program. It's not even just one campus. They have what, I don't know, 10 campuses or so. They have a ton of them. Mm -hmm. Um, you have resources. Right. Why not use them? Okay. I'm trying to get my friends into them too. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it. I'm like, look, this is, this is actually working. All right. Mm -hmm. It's time to pay attention. All right. Yeah, usually when you tell your friends about it and you just joined, they'd be like, ah, oh, nah, it ain't good. Yeah. But then if you're actually making money from it and you're embodying it, it's a right. bit easier to convince them of that. Right, right. I mean, you see, you even see new people come into the to the campuses and be like, hey, is anyone actually making money in this? And we just send them to the wins channel because we have a channel that we post all of our all of our monetary wins in, and we have a leaderboard and we have everything. You could see who and how they're making this money. And if, you, if you're if you confused on what they're doing, you can just message them. They will answer. I don't think I've, I don't think I've tagged anyone in chat who hasn't answered and who hasn't answered well. They haven't, they, like, people are open to talk about it. That's the whole point of the, it's the whole point of the real world. It's the whole point of the campus. It's the whole point of all the campuses. So, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get everyone, I'm trying to get my friends into it, but you're right, they're, Initially, they're a little bit skeptical. They're like, ah, you know, 50 bucks a month. It sounds a little bit too good to be true. It's mm -hmm. not how it works. Yeah, you don't go in and you just start making money. It takes real work. I mean, you said it yourself. People might look at what I'm doing and, and call it um, excessive. Absolutely. And everyone in out, everyone else in there is working excessively as well. That's sometimes just what you have to do. You're not just, there's no magic, there's no magic answer. The magic answer you're looking for is in the work that people are avoiding. All right. All right, so to wrap everything up, for people who are unsure about joining, because what if they think it could be a scam, what advice would you have to them? If you lost $50 on the street, you'd get over it in a few days. So you might as well throw it in for a month just to see, just to see what, what, what it's, what's up. And I'm sure you're going to stick around after that, because if you, you can make those $50 back in the month with everything that they're teaching you, and then some. It's not... Just do it. Cool. Nice. And Cosmo, if people want to find out more about you or contact you, where can they do so? Yeah, I'm on uh, I'm on Instagram. I'm, I'm on pretty much everything. I'm working on building my socials up right now, so they're a little dull, but it's Carson D. Stewart on everything I have. Um, I'll send it over so that you guys can just click on the link if, if uh, yeah. he's willing to throw it in there for I me. I will, of course, add it to the Thank description you. of the video. And yeah, since you're doing so well for yourself, I'll be happy to do an interview in maybe January of next year. And then that Excellent. you can let us know how you've ended off the year, how everything progressed from now until then. And to Yeah, you know what? Now I, now I got pressure to do it. If yeah. we're talking again, I got to deliver. There you go. <laughs> I'm look in. Forward to that. And I'm in. Until then, I wish you all the best. It was a great conversation. Thank you, Carson. Yeah, thank you. It's great meeting you officially. And uh, I'll talk to you soon.